Hey, what's up, nerds? It is Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to talk about the old world. As I am recording this, it is release day for Warhammer the Old World, and I thought I would share my thoughts and my plans and all of that stuff on the old world, because it's already been an interesting journey. All right, so it took me a bit to even decide whether or not I was going to be playing this game. Initially, when this was announced, I was like, eh, not interested, don't care. Uh, maybe we'll get some new Age of Sigmar models. That would be cool. Um, otherwise, I just wasn't really thinking about it. As more stuff came out about it, and, you know, the, the GW hype machine worked, and I definitely gained a lot more interest in it. Then we started getting the rules previews and the uh the pre-release day when all of the content creators were able to start doing content on all of the books and all of that stuff and i immediately thought holy shit this game is really really complicated i don't have enough space in my brain or time to break everything down in this game, learn this insanely complicated system, build an army for a whole new game, and, you know, actually get out there and have time to play it. Uh, and as I watched more content, because I, you know, it, it's Warhammer content, and there's a lot of people that I love that are content creators that were sharing their thoughts out there about it, so I just started consuming and as I was listening, I got my interest back. Um, there's a, a funny thing that I realized. I like complicated things. This game, I realized, is very much oriented towards uh, the Johnny end of the psychographic profile spectrum wheel. I don't know, kind of a color wheel sort of situation, I guess. Um, and I am very much a Johnny type of player. Um, you know, I think it, it possibly could also, at least like older editions, I think also were like more of a Johnny spike, but at least for now, this appears to be very Johnny. There's lots of different moving pieces to tweak around and take some points off here, add some points over there. Uh, do I want a couple of extra models, or do I want this magic item, blah, blah, blah. Like, that kind of just toying around with stuff endlessly, like, I love it. And in thinking about it, looking at things, I started getting hobby ideas. Things just started flowing into my head, and I'm like, well, this is a great excuse to do a fun hobby project. Like, it's inspiration. I don't really get out and play that much anyway. Um, so that part of it is like, I don't know, who really cares? Like, this is a fun hobby project. And for when I do get a chance to get out and play, uh, I'll have an army for it. And I'll be awesome. And in the meantime, I'll just have fun stuff to do. So that leads us to the next piece. My journey of thoughts on what I was going to be playing in this game. Initially, I was thinking Bretonia. And partly because, you know, I have a little bit of a soft spot for that army. Um, I played um, I played some Bretonian stuff in Age of Sigmar uh, back in first edition when all of the legacy stuff uh, still had rules that actually kind of worked. So, um, and I was kind of sad at the time to see those go because they were fun to paint. They were fun projects. I liked the whole cavalry charge mobility thing. And um, I thought that from the hobby perspective, being able to do this wide array of different color schemes over all kinds of different models in the range, um, all different kinds of knights and foot knights and peasants and all of that, um, that it was going to give me a lot of opportunity to just screw around and experiment with different colors, having fun. And 
once I started to dig into the rules a little bit, you know, even before that, I started to kind of soften on the idea and saw the rules. And I'm like, ah, this just doesn't feel that exciting to me. So as I started listening to more content on it, kind of going over the different armies and what they were doing and all of that, uh, Warriors of Chaos really just jumped out at me. It is a decent sized army. I love the models. And it's, um, you know, it, it has a lot of variety to it. I already have a Slaves to Darkness army and a Maggotkin army. So I have a bazillion extra bits already anyway. And this is like just tons of conversion opportunities and I, I don't know I, I'm just kind of excited for all of the prospects so actual plans that I have for this army coming up uh, I as I said I already have a slaves to darkness army but it's all Nurgle marked it's all painted in my maggotkin color scheme with all of the yellow armor and purple, violet, magenta fabrics and uh, diseased skins and all of that sort of stuff. And so I was just not um, it, like, it, I feel like I wasn't really like fully experiencing everything that the army could have to potentially offer to me. And I was also using all of the old uh, Slaves to Darkness, Warriors of Chaos models. Um, you know, it, I started the army before the release of all of those new arm, uh, models and I wanted to kind of keep the aesthetic the same. So I just worked with the old stuff. And in addition to that, I actually also have a bunch of extra models hanging out already anyway, uh, from that, that I like, I just don't really use for the army. A, a bunch of them are still unpainted, um, or they're painted to like a poor quality or they, I just don't ever see myself using them in Age of Sigmar and they're cool models so I can move them over to the old world you know if I converted anything just kind of bit swap some stuff back uh do some interesting stuff with them and you know go from there and it also gives me the opportunity to use the new Slaves to Darkness models which look amazing and I love them and I just haven't had a good opportunity to actually use them because I already had this whole concept already going. And yeah, so, um, yeah, I I've got a million spare bits, so I have a lot of interesting ideas. There's one of the interesting things about the old world that we really don't have in Age of Sigmar is that there are a whole bunch of units and characters that models are not currently in production for, and some of them kind of didn't really ever have models exactly, um, at least nothing that is anything recent enough that you'd feel okay about putting it on the table alongside brand new models. So, that creates a lot of opportunities for conversions and using models from Age of Sigmar that are not explicitly in the old world to really have that kind of carryover and have interesting models. You know, for a great example, um, the Chaos Chosen Knights are not a model that I know of that exists at all. And I wouldn't want to just do regular old Chaos Knights and say, oh, these ones are chosen, though. What I do have, though, is a pile of bits from doing my Slaves to Darkness Varengard. Now, I used different riders for all of my Varengard. So I have still new on Sprue all of these Varengard knights that are just waiting to sit on 
you know, more normal cavalry horses and be my chosen knights. Um, you know, I, I was thinking maybe, maybe going in the direction of just straight up using Varengard models, but I gotta be honest, I really don't like the Varengard mounts that much. Like, now that I've painted a bunch of them and worked with them, like, I think a lot of them look kind of goofy, and I their stances are all weird, um, and I think they would probably look really bad ranked up, so... I think the choice of going basically with the riders is really of more uh, what I think is going to be cool. Uh, I'm still working on paint and basing scheme. I have started messing around and testing stuff out. Um, you know, one idea that I thought might be kind of cool was um, having you know each unit painted in a scheme along with the chaos god mark that i would probably be playing them with but if i ever changed my mind now i have like you know blue uh models that are supposed to be you know corn uh warriors so it's just gonna look weird also in that dipping back into the age of sigmar thoughts as well if i do that again at some point um if I'm really like committed to certain things, there's a bunch of awesome Age of Sigmar models now that have no, like, all of the Godmark stuff. Like, there's no Blood Warriors in the old world. But, you know, if you want to run Chaos Warriors with, say, like, two hand weapons and mark them corn, like, bam, Blood Warriors, perfect. Um, you know, corn Marauders could easily be uh, Blood Reavers. Uh, there's you know, stuff in every range. Uh, particularly, I think the heroes are the thing that I really uh, am going to start with and ha use a lot of heroes from Age of Sigmar that are uh, just going to be brought over to uh, the old world and just say, like, hey, look, like, see this guy over here? That is a Zeech Lord, uh, or a Zeech uh, Sorcerer Lord, right? Or a, a Nurgle uh, Chaos Lord, something like that. Um, also have opportunity to do uh, uh, banners, like the, uh, like the Battle Standard Bearers. Just lots of cool things, and I just have to figure out the paint scheme. Um, I want it to look cool, but I don't want it to be too complicated. And some of the things that I've done so far, um, they look pretty good, but I think they might be a little too complicated for actually building an army. And also in part, um, you know, these are going to be mass ranked up models. So a lot of the detail is kind of going to get lost in there. So I don't want to go too crazy with stuff. So it's, we're going to, we're going to experiment with some things and see. I also, for at least the beginning of this, before I start really dedicating uh, units to a certain chaos god, I really want to leave this as sort of like god neutral. So avoiding things that are lots of green, lots of blue, lots of pink and purple, lots of red. Um, that leaves you with not a lot of colors to work with <laughs> to, uh, you know, at least make this not explicitly that thing. So, um, yeah, I I'm kind of, I'm working on ideas, coming up with some stuff, and we will have to see how it goes. I am definitely just psyched for possibilities right now, and there's just awesome stuff to bring over from Age of Sigmar that I think is just going to look absolutely amazing in the old world and is just going to really spice up that army presentation on the table, having these awesome, like, things that almost feel like centerpiece models, but now they're, like, at the head of a block of troops leading them into battle. So I think that would be very cool. So I'm psyched. I'm really psyched about the hobby aspect of this in particular. And, you know, there's already a 
list builder website out there. Um, I don't know how complete it is yet, but um, I'll also link that down in the description below. Uh, so you, if you haven't gotten access to that yet, you can uh, go check it out and start tooling around with lists like I have, but I've already spent entirely too many hours just fiddling around with lists and seeing what I can do and reading rules and getting on with things. Um, so I'm excited to actually go and pick up my books. That's all I've really purchased so far. Um, I also purchased uh, just the uh, uh, the Slaves to Darkness Battle Force, the, uh, what is that, War Horde of Eternus. That is just, it's all models that are going to be great in this army to use, right? It's, it's warriors, it's chosen, it's knights, it's a, a hero on horse, and it is some Theradons, which I think could work nicely as uh as ogres so uh with that i thought i would take another quick turn here though one of the things that honestly have been giving me a little bit of pause on this game as well is the discourse that i have seen in a whole bunch of youtube videos podcasts and all over Facebook groups. I want to caveat this and say, the majority of people that I like and respect have been incredibly positive and have been at least, um, you know, if there's something there that they didn't really like, they're at least kind of like, they're kind about it. They're not just out there ripping into Games Workshop, but, there are so many things out there. There's like clickbait videos and all of this crap. It's like the negativity and hate for Games Workshop. It's back in style. All of the neckbeards that were back in the day uh, pissing and moaning about the release of Age of Sigmar, the whole Age of Shitmar crowd, um, a lot of them are rolling back into the old world. And that makes me a little bit hesitant about this um but what i've realized is that for stuff on the internet it's like you see something dumb and you keep scrolling uh, i actually left the old world facebook groups because they were just getting too toxic too many people complaining arguing being jerks in general uh, like i'm just going to talk to my friends and if i talk to my friends it's going to be a good time everybody's really positive on it some of this like there's some stuff like i have some criticism too but it's like um you know i think games workshop it's more that they're sometimes their marketing's bad and their spin on it is bad um but you know overall i want to say that i want to stay really positive on this i don't want to like hate on the people that uh you know left for age of sigmar and now they are coming back in for the old world the thing that i really more want to focus on is um you know i think we as a community in general need to kind of you know a gatekeep basically like <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it um like frankly it's gatekeeping it's it's saying to these people like look we have all been involved with Age of Sigmar, like so many of us have been involved with Age of Sigmar, and we've created an amazing, positive group of people playing this game, an amazing community. Um, and we're not going to let, like, shitty people fuck it up for the old world. And I think those people, like, it, it I think we need to be, it, when we see negativity, we need to uh, not let it go. Or not just negativity. It's okay to be upset about things. It's okay to have criticism. But people that are just being salty jerks, like, no. Like, we need to all be grown-ups here. This is a hobby. We're having fun. We're having a good time. Um, you know, don't let people ruin a time for anybody else. Um, the, the particular things that um, have been funny so far... Uh, the release of that new Bretonian hero that, you know, they basically found at the back of the closet when they were cleaning stuff out. And they're like, oh, man, 
we should re-release this or we should release this for the old world because it was just something that uh had been sculpted and they never released and you know on a couple accounts people are very critical of that because um they're seeing it as games workshop kind of maybe copping out or uh trying to sell old crap to us and you know they, there's been a lot of uh people being upset about them re-releasing the older models for these ranges that aren't necessarily all of the best quality sculpts because they were sculpted a long time ago. Like nothing. The important thing here is that I think everybody needs to focus on is that these models aren't bad because they're bad and they're not even really that bad. They, they had limitations at the time due to technology available right when they were hand sculpting a lot of these miniatures a long time ago they they just didn't have the ability to do the sort of crisp fine detail that we have with the new models so when you have a model like this bretonian character yeah some of it's going to look a little off it's not going to be up to current level quality but Part of this game, frankly, seems to be nostalgia. And that is a brand new model that is just perfectly fitting in with the old style of Games Workshop models. And even in the plastic sculpts, because right, I know that one is either going to be mesin, resin or metal. Um, at least I'm pretty sure it is. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be plastic. Um, it It's going to work. Um, in those older materials, it was just harder to have that detail. And if you if you work on it, it'll be cool. And there's going to be people out there that just love it because it fits in with that aesthetic, that classic aesthetic of their army. They can buy a new thing that they have never had before that looks just like the thing that they've had in their closet for a decade. And that, I think, is valuable to and if you don't like it, just freaking don't buy it, guys. And I don't think that Games Workshop was going to commission a sculpt on a new character miniature for the Bretonians like that if they didn't just find this, right? Like, this is just an extra thing, I really believe. Um, the re-releasing of old models, like... Uh, these are at some point going to get updated. They're still selling old models for Age of Sigmar. We have some old kind of derpy sculpts in Age of Sigmar still. So I think at some point they're going to get refreshes on the ranges if they uh, are successful with this game. And, you know, we all need to you know, get out there and love it and show Games Workshop that there's real interest in this. And then we'll get more stuff. And for, uh, in the meantime, you know, honestly, one of my gripes too is that a lot of this negativity about the re-release of these older models that have, um, you know, much older sculpts that are not at the kind of quality that we have now, um, I don't suspect these guys were going to be out there buying whole new armies anyway. Um, you know, I heard one comment on a podcast about, you know, I had my lizard men army that I, you know, I started it in seventh edition and I uh, played it all the way through eighth edition and then age of Sigmar happened and it went on the shelf. So it's this age old problem that like these guys that have been around forever, they're, they're not customers really. Um, I suspect a lot of them are not going to actually be buying new armies. They're going to probably go out there, buy new books, and throw their old models on the table and maybe pick up a couple of new cool things uh, to add to their army now that they're back available. But, you know, they, you know, on the pricing, like, inflation's a thing. This is a publicly traded corporation. They're out there to make money. And, you know, people are complaining about, you know, oh, it's not the it, – it's a, such a higher price than it was when I – originally bought this army 15 years ago well like no shit the cost of production's gone way up of course the price has gone up <laughs> like it's like people just don't understand like basic economics sometimes and it just makes me absolutely crazy 
Um, one thing that I did want to touch on real quick is the legacy armies in the old world. Uh, we have, you know, the nine supported armies and then everything else that was in uh, 8th edition, I think except Chaos Dwarves. And I'm not really sure if that even technically was in 8th edition or not, because that was a Forge World thing to begin with. Um, those armies, I suspect that what we're going to have happen is what happened with Age of Sigmar with those legacy armies. They started out in Age of Sigmar with, we're going to give you rules for all of this stuff and you can play with all of your old toys, don't worry about it. And very explicitly here, at least, they're saying, don't expect further support for these. They're being pretty upfront about it. So I think we're going to see the same pattern that we saw with Age of Sigmar, at least early on, when everything started getting rules refreshes uh, after those uh, initial compendiums came out and everything that was uh, legacy or legends all just started to really age poorly and they got points initially and then the points were never updated so the points now in age of sigmar they're all out of whack for the power levels of the units so it just doesn't really make sense and i think that's going to also happen with the old world so i would really encourage people uh, unless you hear something about those armies getting real support in the future where they go back and say like no these are going to be supported armies a couple of years down the line i would not buy any models for those ranges um, unless you're just playing them in age of sigmar as well or you know you're picking up a few small things or you just have cash to blow or you like the models whatever um but i wouldn't run out and buy a whole new army that is one of the legacy factions in the old world and expect that to just be usable forever i think within like two to three years max, I think you're probably going to see those armies just not be able to compare with everything that's more up to date that is being supported. You're just not going to have the same toys. It's not going to be maintained and updated and the power level is not going to be adjusted properly. They're not going to get the balance updates, I don't think. So I think we really need to have a lot of caution with those if you already have those armies fantastic play them everything i've heard is that the rules for them at release look like they are just just fine same power level same care taken as the supported armies but i wouldn't run out and buy armies for those uh, for those legacy factions it's i think that is a recipe for disaster games workshop is as much as telling you not to do that so just don't do it don't don't fall into the trap i fell into a bit of a trap myself at the start of age of sigmar i bought a whole bunch of bretonian stuff and then it went legacy and it was never supported again and i i eventually got rid of it all so so don't waste your money unless you have money to waste and you just love the models but my overarching message, even though I have these concerns and criticisms and frustrations, um, I really want to say we all need to just stay positive, filter out the negativity, and when you see it, when you hear it, you know, don't don't fight fire with fire, but just say to people like, look, like we're all here to have fun. Like there's no need to be like this. If you don't like it, don't buy it. If you're mad about something, like whatever. But I think a lot of these people are just, um, they're mad at Games Workshop for a, from a long time ago and they never got over it. And now they're, they're going to find a reason to be mad no matter what. And, you know, to a certain extent, I think people like that you can't really reason with. You're not going to change their minds about anything. 
and they're just going to be salty forever. So change the topic, change the subject, move on, or just, you know, don't, when you're looking for games, don't, uh, don't shoot the message over to those guys, you know, let them know that, um, you're, you're not cool with that attitude, but you know, in the process, show them what the kind of community that Age of Sigmar has to begin with, you know, be good to them, be nice to them, be friendly, opening, open, welcome. Uh, that's really something that Age of Sigmar has fostered a lot and let's make sure that the community in the old world has that vibe carried over and we don't get the uh the neck beard problems that we had in older editions of warhammer so i'm excited overall guys i hate to uh, hate to leave it on that kind of sour note um that's why i kind of left it at the end most people don't watch the end of these videos anyway so i thought i would tuck it away and hide it where only the dedicated people that uh understand what i'm talking about are going to listen to it <laughs> um but that's it for now. Uh, it's old world release day. I am going to start uh, assembling models and I've got a bucket load of bases on the way that I picked up on eBay. Um, I'm going to be, I'm still testing out color schemes. I've got some test models going. I think there's some models that need to go uh, get stripped. And yeah, so that's going to be it for now. Uh, I'll probably be doing some amount of old world content in the future. Um, you know, those of you who have been around my channel for a while know that anytime I start something, um, I don't necessarily follow through with it. And um, I've got ideas. And I think, uh, you know, like the Warforge concept that I just started, I think I was originally going to be like, oh, I'm going to do this every week. And now it's like being dedicated to something on a weekly basis for me just is hard. And my general philosophy with YouTube has always been, I'm going to do this because it's fun. I'm not going to turn it into a job and I'm not going to do it. If it feels like work, I'm going to do it because it's fun and entertaining. And, you know, like doing this video, this kind of like concisely got all of my thoughts together about the old world. It let me think it all through for myself. And then I just kind of sit here and, record a video for a half hour talking about my thoughts, uh, kind of regurgitating it. So uh, hope you all uh, have enjoyed, going to come along with us on the hobby journey. If you're not into the old world, that's cool. Uh, maybe check it out anyway. And, um, you know, I'm definitely not abandoning Age of Sigmar by any means. Still going to continue. Age of Sigmar probably is my primary game, but who knows? Maybe if I like old world lore, I'll go in that direction. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now, and I'll talk to you all later.